In this video, we're going to be using conditional random fields for image segmentation. So rather than launching into a bunch of theory and going over equations, um, I'm going to give you guys this Jupyter Notebook, which implements conditional random fields um, using a library called PyDenseCRF. And I'm just going to be scrolling through it, not going to be typing any code. And I'm going to be explaining conditional random fields as I go through. Okay, so the goal here is that um, you guys be able to change some parameters and you'll get a better understanding of how an intuitive understanding really of how uh, CRFs are used to improve image segmentation masks all right so now there's two notebooks here there's CRF cat demo and then there's CRF post-processing so um, the post-processing one is meant to just be uh, kind of like a practical example using uh, a trained model from the shapes data set um, so you can see the predicted mask and how uh, CRFs were able to clean up that mask a little bit. Um, it's kind of just there. For whatever reason, I wanted to use a cat in the demo. So I created a separate notebook um, just to kind of like, just for this video, okay? So let's just start by scrolling through here. We've got an image of a cat. And if we scroll down here, I've also got a mask that I've created for this cat. So I went into paint.net and I used a uh, the little airbrush tool and I on purpose created a really bad looking mask and the whole goal of this was to create a an example or like a simulated example of a bad mask that was predicted from a neural network or really this could be any machine learning model okay um, and we'd like somehow to improve this existing mask that we've created okay um, and so in order to kind of like introduce this topic or explain this, I'm actually going to be going over two image filtering techniques. It's uh, the Gaussian Gaussian blur and a bilateral filter. Okay. Um, so when we talk about creating conditional random fields to improve this bad mask that we have, there's two things that we're mainly concerned about. That's image intensity and the proximity of pixels. Okay. Uh, so what does that mean? Like, if we just take a look at uh, an image, take a look right here. We've got the cat's tail, and then we have the background. Notice that we have a very sharp change in pixel intensity. And so not all the time, but a lot of the time, um, a good mark or a good indicator of, okay, this, this is actually going to be a boundary between two separate classes is pixel intensity. So we want to be able to preserve that information somehow. Another thing that would kind of uh, a general relationship we want to pick up on is the proximity of pixels. So generally, if we if we take a pixel from here on the cat and then we've got another pixel that's like 10 pixels away, there's a good chance that's still going to be within the cat. So we'd also like to be able to capture that relationship in the image. Um, and another thing that I kind of want you guys to take note of here is if you look at whatever the cat is laying on here if you look very carefully you can see the the texture so this is an example of pixel proximity normally if we're here and we're over here same class and then the other example i talked about before was the tail and the background right so if we go down here and we take a look at a this is a gaussian blur so what we do is we take a kernel, we pass it over the image, and that will create a blur on the image. So in this case, I use the 31 by 31 kernel because I wanted a really, really heavy blur. But notice how we've completely lost the uh, edge definition between the tail and the background. And then notice how um, we've lost that texture. So it's kind of all blended into one class. So this is an example where we have this texture which we kind of want all of that to blend into one class but we don't really want this undesired effect of the tail blending in with the background right that's kind of bad we've kind of lost that sharp change in pixel intensity so one way to maintain both of those is to use something called a bilateral filter so with the bilateral filter filter you'll notice that if we look at the textures uh, the texture is gone. Like we still have pixels in close proximity um, and kind of suggesting that they should be of the same class. But now if we look back over at the tail, 
we've also noticed that we've maintained uh, this large jump of intensity difference between those pixels, the background and the cat's tail. So the bilateral filter um, and the way we kind of end up using it will be, it's, it's not exactly how the CRF is implemented, but it's very similar. And those same ideas between preserving pixel intensity and pixel proximity will come up later. Okay. So, and actually, well, no, we'll just, we'll just go into the next part. So uh, for this part, the easiest way for me to explain this would be, let me go over to uh, the PyDense CRF stuff. This is in their README. Uh, the equation that we're going to talk about here, I'm not going to get too far into it, uh, is the idea behind an appearance kernel and a smoothness kernel. So these are also, you could kind of call these energies, okay? Um, the way you often see this is an energy or a potential. So this is a pairwise potential. We have another potential um, that has already been created and we've actually been given it, okay? So that's the mask. And that mask is gonna be what's called the unary potential or the unary energy. So in addition to this equation here, we'd have another uh, coefficient, which would be like the unary uh, potential that adds into these pairwise potentials, okay? So the potential energy and what this will eventually turn into is a minimization of the energy. Like the output of this is gonna be negative so what we're trying to do is trying to minimize something called what's like the kale divergence all right uh, we don't really need to get into that too much but there are two things i want to pay attention to here there's this alpha parameter and this beta parameter um, and this is actually so this term right here is what you call the bilateral what's it called the the pairwise bilateral and this other one is what's called the pairwise gaussian all right and this is a, a gamma parameter, okay? So if we go back over to here, there's, uh, let's, let's try changing some of these parameters here, okay? Uh, and actually, maybe I should just run it first. So I already ran it. Um, the output will look something like this. So we took our mask, which previously looked like this, very bad. We reinforce it by minimizing these energies. So we have a unary energy and then we have a uh, the pairwise potential. So we have a potential that's going to be able to capture that intensity change and that pixel proximity. That's going to be what's called the pairwise uh, bilateral. And then there's another one called the pairwise Gaussian, which is mainly meant to smooth out the, the image a little bit more. So when we minimize that energy, that is the output of the CRF. It's the smoothed out mask, okay? Um, so, with that being said, if you were to uh, increase this a lot, so if, if you're familiar with like what regularization is with logistic regression, it's kind of like a, a constant term for to prevent overfitting. So, when we fit machine learning models, oftentimes they fit very tightly to our data, and we like to get a more general fit. So, one way to do that would be to add in a constant to offset that. And that's exactly what these parameters, the alpha and beta parameters, are here for. Um, and to show you guys, so this was originally a 10, 10. And you can see this is S, X, Y. This is, I'm pretty sure it's the standard deviation of X and Y. So this is going to be capturing that pixel proximity that I talked about. And uh, S, R, G, B is going to be capturing the difference of intensity. Okay, so it's capturing two different things. Um, within the pairwise bilateral. So if I increase x, y a lot, let's take a look at what the mask looks like. Now you see very sharp definitions within the mask. Um, and why is that? So what you're seeing here is because I increase this so much, I actually penalize this term so heavily that I no longer care about pixel proximity to improve my mask. Um, what I care a lot more about is the intensity change in the RGB because I didn't change that, remember? And so now I no longer care if these pixels were close to each other. I actually care a lot more about the, the change of intensity here. So, And what you'll see is um, all these darker spots, if you go down here, oh, actually, I should run that. So if I run this now and I add it into my, you can see that it's kind of, 
picked out the, uh, I guess, the bright parts of the cat's fur, and it's kind of said that, okay, these darker parts, because they probably look like um, our background here, I'm just going to put them into the background, okay? So the result is paying attention to lots of different uh, intensities of pixels, and we don't really care so much about proximity, okay? And likewise, if I were to remove that, and I was to increase these to like, I don't know, 130, 130, 130, what do we think is going to happen? We're going to start to see pixels which are close together being cast in the same class, and we discard um, difference of pixel intensity. So the resulting mask looks like this. We know that, well, these pixels are all close um, to our existing mask that we already had, so we're just going to create this very, like, smoothed out mask that doesn't pay attention to differences in pixel intensities anymore. Um, and you might think this looks really good, but if you scroll down, you'll notice that the mask actually got cut off a little bit and returns to, um, it kind of eroded. This is typically what you call erosion in OpenCV, where the segmentation mask gets, uh, and that edge actually got eroded. So what we're really looking to do with this energy equation is figure off a trade-off between these parameters. And I mean, a good way to do that is to just try this out for yourself. Um, and oh, the pairwise Gaussian, if you'd like to smooth out, it doesn't change it much, but if you want to create like a more smooth mask than what we already have, I guess I can run this. So this is what our mask looks like now. If I want to smooth that out a little bit, I could increase compat, that's the, compa the compatibility argument, and it smooths out the mask a little bit. So maybe you can see those edges got cleaned up just a little bit. Um, so the pairwise Gaussian actually doesn't do much, but this is the general idea behind what uh, minimizing the KL divergence is going to do within the CRF. So the output mask will ultimately look um, good. There's going to be a trade-off between, and obviously it didn't get it right by the cat's face here. Like if you were to go up, that's actually where the mask looks the worst because I left a big gap in here. Um, but I think we would agree that this mask is much better than what we started with, all right? Um, and all we're doing with post-processing is just, and unfortunately, this is a computation that happens on the CPU. There have been people who tried to implement this as a recurrent neural network layer, um, but personally, I haven't gone into, like, I haven't tried it for myself because I don't really have the time to do that right now, but maybe it's something I'll do in the future. Um, but hopefully that gives you a good understanding of how conditional random fields are used for image segmentation. And when we go to streaming the model, we'll be able to toggle this on and off. And you can see like live segmentation results. And I think that'll also be cool to see. So I'll see you guys in the next video.